Hi, Nina here from ninamandelson.com and I want to show you how to make healthy fudge. I know it sounds like a bit of an oxymoron, can you really have fudge that's healthy, but yes, totally you can. In fact, I posted this recipe online the other day and it kind of went viral. So I realized I wanted to show you how to make it because it's so easy. I know I see recipes online all the time and I go, oh yeah, that sounds nice, but to make it and if, when I actually see it I go oh that is so easy and what's so great about this fudge is that there's a lot of real food in it normally fudge is a lot of sugar and this is sweetened with dates actual I'm going to show you here these are just real whole dates that I've soaked in water and there's two kinds of dates in here one is really big they're kind of look a little gnarly because they've been soaked in water but there's two kinds in here medjool or diglett and you can use either one so it's sweetened with real fruit which still has a lot of its nutrients a lot of its fiber so it's good for you versus sugar which really depletes your body and leaves you feeling really crummy when you eat sugar you go on that sugar roller coaster and then feel bleh. The other thing, come look at the ingredients because the other thing that's gonna keep your blood sugar level in this healthy fudge is the almond butter. So that's really gonna keep your um, blood sugars even because it's high in protein and high in healthy fats and almonds are really so nutrient dense, lots of calcium, lots of minerals. The other thing that goes in is coconut oil. You can also use coconut butter if you want it even richer and walnuts, which are high in omega-3 fatty acids, good for you, good for your brain, good for everything, and also cacao. So this is raw ground cacao. You can buy cacao powder, and let me just tell you a couple of things. I wanna show you this. This is how cacao actually grows. It's a bean, and it comes actually in a bigger bean, like about this size, and they open it up and there's all these beans. And when we grind them and open them up, you'll see there's what's called cacao nibs. These are all the cacao nibs. And when you grind those, you end up with cacao powder. Now you can buy it already made into powder. I didn't um, have any left, so I just took a coffee grinder, which I keep separate, no coffee in it, just for things like cacao powder or spices that I want ground up. So I just ground it up myself. You don't have to do that. You can buy it already ground up cacao powder. So this is how the recipe goes. You put in the almond butter. You put in the coconut butter, the coconut oil. Now in the recipe, it says three to four tablespoons of oil. I put a little less in because my almond butter was so oily. Um, and then all the dates, all the dates go in and a little bit of sea salt. Always use sea salt. Sea salt is what's gonna um, give your body minerals versus table salt or iodized salt actually depletes. And then I just use orange rind. If you like orange and chocolate, absolutely. If you like peppermint and chocolate, you could add a little peppermint, peppermint oil. The um, I love to grate, this is a microplane, and so it's like a sort of a very thin grater and it does really great with lemons or oranges or lime. So I put a whole bunch of that in. And I'm gonna save the almonds at the end because if I put them in now, they'll be ground up and they won't have that nice texture. Oops, there goes the orange. And here we go, I'm just gonna blend it like crazy. Okay, so take a look. This is what you want it to look like at the end. You want it to look like a paste. You can't really tell the difference of any specific ingredient. It's like one whole paste. And then I just mix in, take out the blade, and then I just mix in right in here. I just mix in the walnuts. Because I mix them in this way just so that they don't get all ground up. I love biting into fudge and then having like a big piece of walnut. Now, if you don't want walnuts, you don't like that crunchy, they're totally fine without it. I made it recently that way. So now there's a lot of different ways you things you can do with this. One, you could take it into little balls like this and just serve it as a truffle. Put it in the freezer, the fridge, it'll get hard. You could roll it in coconut flakes. Nice, elegant truffle. I happen to be a little more of a casual cook, 
and I go really fast in the kitchen. <laughs> so what I do is I just put a whole bunch right on a piece of parchment paper and I turn it into a log. So I'm going to turn it into a log here. And then I'm going to put this log just like this. It'll make two logs like this. I'll put the log right like this into the freezer. And then when I'm ready to eat it, I just slice little pieces. It's also very elegantly served that way, just little slivers. Put it on a plate for dessert. It's beautiful. I served it the other night very thinly sliced with pomegranate seeds all over. It was gorgeous. So this is a way that you can have a healthy sweet treat but still feel good, right? It's gonna keep your blood sugar levels stable. It's not gonna leave you craving more and more sugar. When you eat it, you're gonna feel like I ate something. I got protein, I got healthy fat, I got something sweet and delicious also. Because what I want for you is to, for you to love the food that loves you back. I want you to love the food that loves you back. Eat delicious food that makes you feel good. So. I hope you make this fudge. It's a little, gets a little sticky, but it's totally worth it. Enjoy. Tell me how it goes for you.